Greetings and welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel and today I'm going to be speaking about a topic that I initially mentioned in a video in 2014. It's the same app lib, although it's been modified quite a bit since then to explain these concepts. So let's begin. Now, <clears throat> if you recall, the applet showed you the difference between uh, how the mainstream does calculus, which is this uh, parallel on the right, and how the new calculus handles the derivative. Okay, and of course, um, in the new calculus, the definition, this definition leads very smoothly into the definite integral definition. Whereas over here, you always have a problem because Q of XH, which is the difference between the non-parallel secant line and the tangent is never zero unless of course f is a straight line so <clears throat> and, and then of course uh, in the new calculus you have the property that q of x m n is uh, uh, equal to zero always and it forms an auxiliary equation you can read more about that in my free ebook to which i'll place a link in the detail section so the new calculus is 100% rigorous, um, unlike your bogus calculus, which requires limits. And so, uh, because Newton and nobody before me was able to realize this identity here, which comes from my historic theorem at the top here, uh, they developed a lot of theory, such as this. So, for example, um, not only didn't they have a well-formed definition of definite integral, but they used limits in order to find the uh, limiting values. And so uh, this is a very complex way of learning how to find areas, and it's flawed because uh, n never actually reaches uh, infinity, okay? And supposedly the limit is what happens as n becomes very close to infinity, whatever the, uh, whatever the fuck, excuse my language, infinity is, because it's a junk concept. And of course, uh, nobody before me also knew the general definition of area, which is the mean height multiplied by the width. So they developed all this uh, obfuscated theory, which poor students have to learn about in courses of calculus. And they simply never do understand calculus. Now, the Gabrielian derivative approach is uh, based on this formula. This part here is the slope of a parallel secant line, this red line here. And this is the slope of the derivative plus a difference. Now, what is the difference between these two parallel lines? Zero. That's right. That's why x of m n n x of m n is always zero because there is no difference. It's un unlike your bogus calculus, which you see on the right here, this line here, this uh, diagram here, your bogus calculus has a non-parallel secant line and you simply constantly con concerned with what happens when you reach a limit. And when you do that, you've got a problem because the limit isn't defined at the point of tangency. In other words, there is no rise over run expressed in terms of f that will give you the derivative you have to believe that that limit exists and in order to prove it unfortunately in order to prove it you need to as assume its existence so for example when you go over here and you want to see what's happening um, as you see down here the the uh, limit isn't defined at that particular point okay so in other words, <clears throat> when you use this bogus mainstream definition here, you need to know the limit. Right, so that's very problematic. And that's why most students... So now I'm going to go now and close this up. And um, come back to this uh, applet here. So as I've shown you here, M and N can never be zero because M and N have a special relationship with X. Okay, so all these X, M, N are related in the new calculus. And the only difference between the new calculus and your bogus calculus is that the new calculus does not allow for tangent lines at, inf at points of inflection because 
uh, the new calculus uses the correct definition of tangent. That is, it's a line which meets at one point, extends to both sides, and never crosses the actual curve. Okay, so yes, it may cross at points elsewhere besides the uh, point of tangency, but at the point of tangency, it will not cross over into the curve. In other words, a new calculus doesn't allow for half tangents like your bogus mainstream calculus, okay? And of course, uh, mainstream calculus is uh, uh, paradoxical because you can have a tangent line without a derivative and you can have a derivative without a tangent line. So um, that is very problematic. And the new calculus doesn't allow for nonsense like that. Now, you can always find the general derivative in calculus. So even at a point of inflection, you can find it in calculus. But if you want to believe that there's a tangent line there, you can go ahead and use a general definition. But the new calculus is rigorous. It does not allow tangent lines at inflection points. So these are the main differences. Now, Newton didn't realize this uh, identity here. I did that, and I realized it from my new calculus, because as you can see, this looks similar to this, but they're not quite the same. Um, this here is based on my geometric identity, which says that the non-parallel secant line slope, this non-parallel secant line slope, is equal to the tangent line slope plus the difference between the two, okay? And therefore, we could redefine the derivative as the slope minus the difference. Now, in the new calculus, you don't have a problem because uh, whether you minus the difference or you add it, it's always zero, okay? So this... Uh, expression here is always equal to f prime of x because uh, q of x and n <clears throat> is zero. So you have a 100% rigorous calculus in my new calculus. So this uh, Newtonian approach um, was a result of Newton not understanding exactly what he was doing. So he was very much in the dark, just like Leibniz and all the others that came after him. I brought light to the world where calculus is concerned, okay? And uh, my new calculus is the first rigorous formulation in human history. So I'm going to put a link to my free ebook where you can learn much, much more about these things and also a link to these applets and my article on the geometric historic theorem of January 2020, which is what this, where this identity comes from. But indirectly, it comes from my new calculus. So and in there, you will see the integral formulas of both these explained. They do, do not contain ill-formed concepts such as infinity, infinitesimals, and all the other nonsense. So if you're not already a subscriber, become one. Tell your friends about this channel, and you can thank me by donating money or credits at my Odyssey site. I'm John Gabriel. This is a new calculus channel. Till next time, goodbye.